Hello, hello, and welcome to a very, very special episode of Afro Anime Initiative. Please follow along on our Twitter at Afro underscore AI, on our Facebook, Afro Anime Initiative or Afro AI, on our Instagram, Afro Anime Initiative, and on our YouTube, Afro underscore AI. I'm your host, Paulina, and um, the reason why this is a very special episode is because as far as, you know, us Voltron fans know, Season 6 of Voltron Legendary Defender dropped this past Friday. And um, the reason why it's just me and not, not my co-host is because I have a lot of feelings. A lot of feelings about this, this season. First and foremost, they, they dropped it and they came in hard. Like, we can all agree, for those of you who have seen it, 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 it was a punch to the solar plexus, and it just it just didn't give us any room to breathe from b- beginning to end. Actually, things didn't really kick off until, like, after the second episode, but man, it left no room for anybody to breathe, and they weren't joking. You know, in interviews, you know, they were saying, like, even the voice actors got extremely emotional over this, and I can see why. It was very emotional for a lot of people, you know, and I have to, you know, give a lot of credit to the writers, the showrunners, the voice actors, putting their all into this season. You know, you can tell that they've worked really hard and, um, it, it's, it hit on a lot of things and left a lot of fans either happy or extremely dissatisfied and extremely upset. And um, I'm going to delve into why, you know, I, I liked it, but was very, very upset too. Like, I'll admit, I was extremely mad about a lot of things. Like, my first, my initial reaction was very mixed. Like, I, I didn't even know what to settle on. But I'll tell you that majority of those feelings were not positive. And I think it was because, again, it was such a whirlwind of a season so much happened in seven episodes. So much. So it was... It, it's like I don't even know where to begin. Um, I, I, I will start with the positive, though. Um, a lot of positive plot developments. A lot of... Well, good plot developments. A lot of... A lot of closure for our star character, Keith. Now, as anybody who knows me, I have a thing about, like, certain characters getting more development than others in certain ways. And I think it's just the 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 structure of the show that allowed for Keith to have the development and the changes and the background, all of that, the way he did. Um, the fact that he, you know, in season five, he finally met his mother and it was it was really really interesting. Everybody was just screaming about it, fans. And in season six, we see them spend time with each other, and it's really wonderful. It you see the effect of Keith. You know, when he went to went on that mission with his mom. You know, and they got they decided to stay on that space whale. Let's they have strange creatures in outer space. You know, that time he spent with her, you could see the changes that he went through towards the end of the season. Like, he was more confident. He, you know, he really did change for the better. And genuinely, I'm really happy for him. You know, he sees that his mother loved him or loves him. His father loved him. Like, we we also get to see how his parents met. Um, why his mother left, what happened to his father, and how he met Chiro. Dude, Chiro was like legit his guardian. So of course, they're so close, and Chiro's the one person after his parents who looked after him like his own and believed in him 100%, never, ever gave up on him. And that's beautiful. You know, and the beautiful thing about it is um, Keith... Showing his devotion to Shiro in a way that, you know, he genuinely loves him. And it's not, and it's not necessarily romantic. That's the beautiful thing about it. You know, the, the show explores different forms of love, which is wonderful. 
I'm really great for I'm really grateful for that. You know, it shows um, the love for siblings, the love for you know friends, the love for just somebody who's been there for you, either blood related or not, who's encouraged you from day one, who's always been there for you. And I understand that 100. percent You know, that's something that really hits home for me. And the best thing about it, it's it's from one one man to another. You don't see that often in media. You don't see that often in cartoons. You don't see that often in live action shows. You just don't see it often, especially in American programs. You're starting to see it more and more, but it's it's still rare to see. So for me, it's an absolutely beautiful thing. It's just that form of unconditional love between two characters. And the fact that Keith again, got to spend time with his mom, and get a really cool, like, teleporting cosmic dog, or, or wolf, like, that, I want one, like, it, I, I need one, I, I really want one, <laughs> so I thought, I thought that was interesting, um, another thing I thought was really, really interesting was Lance's development as a character, but as I've pretty much seen from the beginning, Lance is the kind of person who is the support. You know, he, at the end of the day, he shoves his feelings aside, his own opinions, normally, and he steps up and be the support for everyone else, especially Allura. Like, a couple times when Keith was the Black Paladin at first, you know, Lance was like, okay, we can, we can still get this done, we could still... You know, we're a team, we can still do this. Which is fantastic. And then you see you see him supporting Allura one hundred percent. And what's really, really interesting about it is that Lance it's been known that Lance has, has a thing for Allura. But in this season we see that Lance likes her more than a crush. And it's heartbreaking because he 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 feels that Allura doesn't feel the same way. You know, she's making eyes at Lotor and it's it's really, really, really mature of him to put his own feelings aside, well, acknowledge them, but and not not to impose them on Allura the same way he did when they first met. So that that by itself is 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 um, admirable. Like that kind of growth in Lance is great. Like he's still he's still he's still a bit of a jokester. He's still you know the comic relief. Um, I mean, there are certain things, though, that they did touch on about Car- Lance's character development that I am not very that I'm not very happy with, but I'm gonna I'll explore that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, like his his moments of leadership has shown through, not just in season six, but throughout the series, primarily season five and six. Um, but it's he's 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 been shown to grow in a very good way. So I, I've, I've been, I was really happy with that. Hunk, goodness, Hunk, oh my goodness. Look, look, he took on, he took on a role of leadership by learning more about the Galra. He learned about Repitsa and what it meant. And so <laughs> when he used it to, to get two, two Galra, one general and one lieutenant, you know, attention because what the scene was was that there was a there was a shield that broke apart and was and was damaged and it, they needed to use this shield to protect them from a radiation field or flare that goes around the planet in like maybe every 15 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so so hunk goes in and you know pretty much instructs everybody to hey do this let's do that you know, if you do it this way, it would work. You know, you see great teamwork between Allura and Lance. And um, it's just, it just hunk. He really, really stepped up. You know, you get to see him use his skills as, a, as an engineer, which is great. Like, something I've always wanted to see. I, you know, instead of seeing him more as a character that's, like, focused on food. Even though, yeah, food is his passion. It's like, when I want to see the, the other aspect of him, the engineer. And we got to see that, which is great. I mean, it took six seasons, but it's still <laughs> it's still great. It's as you can see, my grievances with timing and how long it takes for certain characters to shine is a it's a bit of a sore spot for me. But 
again, wonderful, wonderful show of character development on Hunk's part. You know, showing his curious side, how he wants to learn more about Gulra culture, the rather harsh way he put up with in terms of learning Gulra culture. Rather amusing, but all the same, really, really interesting to watch. So I really, really appreciated that. And um, so it was just really great to see that. Koran, man, listen, I don't know about anybody else, but Koran stole the entire season. He he stole the show. Like, he, for me, I don't want to say he's an underrated character, but it feels like he's kind of been left in the dust in terms of character appreciation. But not so much. Like, I, I also see fans like, man, Koran is amazing. And he is. Like, he, in terms of getting the castle working, he literally used his grandfather's liquor. Not, not even, like, fermented for 10,000 years. He made a Molotov cocktail and, <laughs> and threw it at the core reactor, making the ship work again. Like, if that's... Listen, if that's not genius, I don't know what is. It made me laugh so much. But it worked. And it was great. He really, 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 really pulled through with that. He didn't... He never disappoints. And that's what I love about his character. He's always doing his best to help the other characters, and he's another great supportive character, you know. Again, another another comic relief, but he he really did shine in his own way, in great ways throughout the series, actually. So I really really appreciated his role, his part in um, getting the castle working again in many 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 creative ways, not just the Molotov cocktail thing. Like with that is like the most impressive way he got the, the ship to work. But th th he's just, he's been very creative. Very creative. So it's, so it's just really, really, really awesome to see that. Now, the Dungeons and Dragons episode of, like, Monsters and Mana, which, I, personally, I thought it was cute. I thought it was really, really funny. Um, it was a great, to me, it was a filler episode. Primarily a filler episode. Um, I just love how it stayed true to RPGs and, um, like, just role-playing, and it's, it's like, it touched upon the frustrations and the triumphs of it, and the fact that Lance, who wasn't into it at first, literally became, like, the most enthusiastic one with his, uh, like, Naruto fanboyness. I, I'm telling you, man, like, they were spot on with everything, him being a ninja thief, to when, you know, made clone apparitions a log, showed up in place, like, like, little details like that was so interesting. Uh, Shiro as the paladin, oh my god, Karan was extremely frustrated with that, and I just found that really amusing. Like, how there's always that one person who's just so unoriginal with building a character in role-playing games. You know, it, they, they showed that. They showed other characters who were enthusiastic about it and it was it was an overall good time it was fun to watch i liked it for me it didn't really contribute much but it was a good it was a good time for the paladins to relax and it was nice to see that finally for the paladins to like have some downtime and spend some time with each other as we actually don't see that very often on the show we really don't and it took si again time it took like six seasons six to get there six okay but um uh, now, Shiro's return, his revival, that, that was, that was, that was, that was magical, man, it, like, it made, it made a lot of sense for Keith to retrieve Shiro, to gain that connection with the Black Line, to realize that, or to learn that Shiro was with the Black Line the entire time, it's just his physical body wasn't around anymore, like, he legit said that he died, listen, that hit me, like, I expected that, and I'll be honest, I was like, I hope Shiro dies. Technically, he did, since season two, or three, two. So, so it's like, huh. So he died, but not in the way we thought he would. So he was always there. He was always there. Just not, you know, active. Because he doesn't have a physical, he didn't have a physical form. So for... For Allura to bring him back, to bring him into his clone's body, and his whole, his hair just pretty much all turned white. That's just that was just magical. Um, so for that, it was it was that was 
<sighs> like I'm still I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that, or wrap my feelings around it. It was just it was just an interesting, really cool moment. And Lotor's deceit man, okay, okay, okay. Now this is gonna go straight into my grievances with the season. Now, Lotor's storyline was compelling. You know, you see that he didn't have a great upbringing. You saw that he did everything he can to compensate, you know, being rejected from his empire. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of his own Galra kin just didn't see him as royalty. They were just like, oh, gross, half-breed thing. You know, he had that. He had a horrible, really, he had no relationship with his parents. Like, none. Like, he hated Hagar, and Zarkon was just, ugh, no. So, he had a rough upbringing. And he wanted what was best for his empire through the means of acquiring pure quintessence. And, you know, he was he was very knowledgeable about this. He did a lot of research. He did a lot of on-field work. Which included <laughs> getting quintessence from Altaeans that survived the fall of Altea. And the thing is, he's the kind of character, he's, he's more com he's more than a villain. Like, he's not a straight black and white evil. No, he thought, he did what he thought was good for his empire. You know? And that's, that's the tragic thing about it. He did everything that he could to avoid the demise that his parents met. And the thing is, I called it, I pretty much called it, like, two seasons ago, if not one, that he was, he w it was going to come full circle. Though my grievances with that was the fact that it, it just came down, it just crashed down. It literally crashed down so quickly, so quickly. Like, I wasn't expecting it for it to happen this fast, literally within a season. And it threw me off so badly, like, my chest constricted. I was so angry. I was so upset. Because, again, I knew that this was going to happen, but just not at the rapid descent n at that it did. Like, I figured that it was going to take some time, that he goes back and forth getting the pure quintessence and distributing it amongst his people, convincing them, like, hey, this type of energy is great for our people. We don't have to enslave others in order to survive. And... It was just devastating to see how it just all went downhill for him very fast. Because while Allura had every right, every right to be upset over Lotor's past and what he did to her people, like, she had every right. The thing was her anger. Now, her temper never really gave, like, much positive resolution to a lot of issues. You know, we as we see, like she's she's a hothead, kind of like Keith. Like her temper, got, has gotten her into trouble, very much like Keith. And it's understandable. She's technically still a kid or p teenager, in her late teens. Emotions run high. But mind you, she's also a princess, and um, she needs to be in a place where she can at least be level-headed about anything, even if it's the most horrific thing. And in her anger, when she and the other paladins, minus Keith, who was off to get Shiro, her and the other paladins were facing off against Lotor and his generals, who came back to him. And it's like, I think, like, his generals were just jumping from side to side so they could survive, basically. It's not even about loyalty, it was just about just where they could go to survive, basically. So that by itself was a bit of a betrayal for Lotor, too. Which made sense, but at the same time, it's like, nobody's loyal to Lotor, if you really think about it. Like, yeah, his generals have been with him, and, you know, did his bidding, and worked with him, and he kept them safe, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, nah. I mean, going back to Allura, when they were facing off, again, she was beyond, just, she was just pissed. And the thing that just made me so mad was the fact that she took Zarkon and threw it in Lotor's face, telling him that he was no different from his father. And that, I, I just, I'll be honest, I just wanted to punch my screen. 
Like I, I've always been, appreh- I've always been back and forth with Alora. Like she's, she's a very interesting character. She's complex. She's, I don't, well, she's an alien, but she's human too. Like she has her emotions. She has every right to be mad and pissed off about everything that happened. To be happy, all of that. To be cute, all of it. But, I, there were so many times when Lothar could have attacked the paladins. He could have destroyed them. But he didn't. And he was he was actually genuine about what he wanted to achieve, but actually working with Voltron with, and the pal you know the paladins and the princess, and I think he genuinely liked Alora that he genuinely loved her. It's just he's just one of those people where, you know, they try to do things with good intentions but with bad results. That's what it is. And you know, for for Alora to to take that and throw it into Lothar's face was literally below the belt. I mean, it's war, anything goes. But there were so many times when Lothar restrained himself. Even the generals were, like, ready to fight and fire against Voltron. And you know that they were actually more powerful than Voltron. But, again, he was like, no, 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 no. I need her to hear me out. I need the paladins to hear me. He restrained himself. That's the thing. And Alora was like, no, you're just like your dad. You're evil, you're, you're, you're... You're disgusting. No, absolutely not. And that was when Lothar was like, you know what? Screw this. Y- you're, you no. Like, he literally went, screw this. And now here's, here's where it kind of gets, I mean, for me, it's like, well, I can see where the influence of him being exposed to too much of the pure quintessence comes into play. Um, but at the same time, it's like, sometimes for, I think at that point it was like enough is enough for him. Like, he's been through too much. Again, like, at, if you really think about it, nobody was loyal to to Lotor. So, I, it was understandable that he just went off, but to the extent that he went off, the rapid descent. Again, that, you know, he just basically said that he'll just destroy anybody in his path. He'll even kill Galra. And that's when his generals were like, no, we're not. We're not, we're not doing this. Nope, nope. And they left. They left. You know, just as he was forming, um, Syncline, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That, that, so, it was, <sighs> Lotor is a very complex character. You know, he wasn't evil. He just did things cold and calculated with, by any means. Doesn't mean that what he did was right, but it meant that he was actually a scientist at heart. He really was. Because if you think about it, if it wasn't for, you know, the whole, like, morality thing, like, we can't experiment on human beings, and to an extent we got to stop experimenting on animals, if it wasn't for that, man, we'd be making a lot of jumps, but a lot of experimentation on human beings. And that's what he did. For the betterment of Altea. But, again, it was at the expense of hundreds, if not thousands, of Altean lives. And that's that's what makes it that's what makes him so interesting. And for him to get an end like that, for him to for them to go into that quintessence field and be and have him be left behind, I I was ready to give up on the show. That was one of the things that made me the absolute most upset about this season. Like they built him up so well for this to happen, and it's like I I wasn't expecting for this this way. I really wasn't. And I'm not happy with it at all. It's like, really? How, how is that even possible? Like, how could you put a character like that? But again, it's not my show. I didn't write it. At the end of the day, I mean, the writers did what they did. Doesn't mean everybody has to be happy with it, though. I'm not saying they're terrible writers. They're not. By by no means. They're <laughs> actually pretty good compared to most show showrunners. Like, show that I've seen. Like... They're, they're, they're not too bad. But to see that kind of thing happen to a character, like, p- fans are calling him just full-blown Azula. But the thing was, it took three seasons for Azula to reach that point. Lotor, literally a season and a half. A season and a half. Or about two seasons, if my, if I'm, like, with the amount of times he's been shown. Um... So that, that, that just, it still blows me. 
and it's it it's not something I'm ever happy with. So it feels like it, there's a build up. You know, there's a chance that Lothar will come back. But to me, it's like he'll be the kind of character where they'll probably easily defeat. Like he won't pose as much of a challenge anymore. Like he'll just be a throwaway character later on, I feel. Like I would love to be proven wrong. Believe me, I would love to be proven wrong. And when it comes to this stuff. But that's how I feel. So um another another issue I have is there has been sprinkles of em- em- sorry, sprinkles of emphasis on team building and team bonding throughout the series. But it feels like in season six ha- there there has been a lot you know, teamwork, but it feels like it's only been enough to form Voltron and for them to work well together as Voltron. But separately, it feels like it's not there. They're not as close, you know, or it is, but the, you know, it's not shown. And it puts into question, like, are they really, like, written to just be support for certain characters? You know, put in a certain frame that the teamwork is only there for Voltron only, but not with each other. You see Lance being heartbroken, and Pidge and Hunk make fun of him. But the only person to comfort him is Allura, but not on that. Like, she shows her support, but it's it's like not, I don't want to say not the same way she sh- um, Lance shows support for her, but it's, it's there. It's getting there. And it's like, but I would figure that the people he's known longer would step in and, yeah, make fun of him. They're his friend, of course. Friends make fun of each other for anything. But not just make fun of him and then leave it like that. Like, I I was hoping for at least a, a little bit of a heart-to-heart, but I was disappointed in that. I was also, I found it interesting, too, the moment Lance quote-unquote died. Now, I don't think he died, but I think he was just knocked out, like, cold. And Alora revived him, which was fine, but it was a short-lived moment. It was a bonding moment, but it was short-lived. So it's, it's, it's like, I'm looking at Lance's development and his role as a supporting character, and it's like there's always hints of him advancing further as a character, but it's always cut short or thrown aside. That's what I've noticed. Yeah, he's gotten some development. He, he definitely has grown as a character, but it's always short-lived or put aside to make room for the starring character's development or the second starring character's development and growth. And I just I just find it really interesting how Lance has been treated throughout the series, actually. Not just this season, but the series. And I'm asking myself, well, let me rewind a bit. The showrunners did say they did not anticipate Lance's popularity. Which, on the one hand, I mean, you can't, there's a lot that you can't anticipate. There's a lot that you know, when you're building something, you don't anticipate people liking a certain aspect you didn't think too much on, which is understandable. But at the same time, it's like, you kind of have to have a bit of hindsight when you're building a character that is extremely relatable. Keith is extremely relatable, so is Shiro, to an extent Hunk, and Pidge. But Lance, he, if besides Keith, I think he's one of the most popular characters. You know, he's... The one character that every that a lot of people I've noticed, even myself, can relate to, you know, in terms of insecurity, in terms of, you know, doing his best and not really getting much in return, in terms of just trying to survive and being homesick. He doesn't want this. He really doesn't want this. He does not want to be a mom. Well, he he finds some joy in being a paladin, but I think that he just wants to go home. He wants to see his family. He thinks that, at least back there, he is more loved and appreciated than in the cold expanse of space. Like, yeah, he's surrounded by his teammates, but to an, by an extent, you know, they're considered family, but it's not the same bonds that he feels um, compared to his blood relatives, compared to his siblings, compared to his mom, compared to his grandparents, all of that. So it's kind of sad to see that You know, Lance as a supporting character, I feel like he should have been treated better. I mean, they did the best they could with him, 
with what they could give him, but it's like, in hindsight, you should have anticipated that he would have at least some level of support from the fans. Yeah, we didn't expect for him to blow up like this, but some something. So it's like it's like a yo-yo thing with him. And the thing that irked me the absolute most was in season five, he noticed that in the you know, in the Astro plane that Shiro was trying to reach out to him. He couldn't hear what Shiro was saying, but you know, Shiro specifically reached out to him, or at least Lance specifically noticed. But well, no, not but. Even later on in season five, Shiro, well, the clone, approached Lance and saying, "Hey, there's there's actually something. There, it feels like there's something wrong with me." And they actually sit down. And now the question is, did they actually talk about it? Is something weird? Like what's going on? So you would think that Lance would be able to pick up, like, okay, there's something wrong with Shiro. He was he was singled out for a reason. And then season six, that didn't. That didn't they didn't that didn't come to come into play. Cause still, Keith after a season and a half comes back, you know, with his development, great on him, but manages to go back into the Black Lion, go after Shiro, fight him, like yeah, like kind of like to have their showdown, and discover that Shiro was the one the real Shiro was in the Black Lion the entire time. And he brings him back. And then when he does bring him back, you know, it's revealed what Shiro was trying to do, and Lance is, like, overcome with guilt, and he cries, because he's like, oh my god, this, this, that's what it was? I had no idea I could have done something. And I'm, and I, personally, I'm sitting back and I'm looking at this like, is, is that all they put him up to? Because again, I, again, I read an interview where they said that, you know, Lance did notice that Shiro was trying to reach out to him, but they didn't, they, they also said that they didn't plan on doing much with it. And I thought they were joking. I thought they were trolling. I thought they wanted to avoid spoilers. And now I see it in fruitation. It's like, no, they were serious. Like, nothing came out of it. Except, again, putting Lance at a disadvantage emotionally and feeling bad. And I'm like, that, is that really how you treat a character? Uh, but... I don't know. For me, it's like... With the way how things are going, in terms of episodes, like with six to seven episodes per season, and I know that, I believe that they have like a 78, 72 or 78 episode commitment, we might get four more seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Two or four more seasons. So, with that said, their next, you know, their next chapter... You know, the, in the the following seasons, in the upcoming seasons, is that they are going back to Earth. Now, before I continue on with that, I just wanna I just wanna say that that with my grievances on this show, like again, my biggest ones was I guess just Lance's development as well as Lotor's demise, and another thing with the t- team bonding thing. Now, I know it made sense for Keith to go after Shiro and get him back. It was a given. It's inevitable. It was inevitable. It was a given. You know, because Shiro always, you know, pulled Keith out. It was always there for Keith. It only made sense for Keith to be there for Shiro and pull him out when he was in trouble. That's a given. That I'm like, I'm perfectly fine with. Of course, I expected this. However, it it was a little disappointing that it could have worked that the whole team, because they're a team, there's emphasis on team building and them being together, working together, being a family, having a bond amongst family. You would think that the other the other paladins would have at least be involved to help Keith and yeah, ultimately just each pal have each paladin be knocked down and it would be just a final showdown between Keith and Shiro. Like think about it. It would have gone a lot differently. And you would see that the paladins actually notice and have, you know, be there for him. Be there for the both of them, because apparently they love Shiro, but it, that wasn't the case. It could have gone so much differently. And again, I'm not knocking down, you know, the you know the bond between Keith and Shiro, but it's like, think, like, it, ju- it just could have, it could have worked. It would have been great. 
It really, it really would have. But we don't see a lot of that. There's the emphasis, but I think it's just, for me, it was just all talk and no show. And that's what's, a lot of that is, that's what's really disappointing. And I, I also noticed that the way how things kind of, I don't want to say wrapped up, I, I now understand why they kept focusing on Keith. It's like they, they want to get his arc, I don't want to say done and over with, but it's it's just the one that's been most emphas- emphasized to drive the story forward. And that's fine. But again, it's just, it's so uneven. Like, don't give me a show and promise me that it's a show about all these characters, but you give one character the absolute most character development. Like, it makes no sense to me. None. And then you have one character, supporting character, who's 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 grown some, but is essentially a throwaway character. That That's my take. You know, Lance is a wonderful character, but it feels like he's also like a rebound character too. Because we see the romance between Lotor and Allura, but it's it wasn't... It was more like infatuation, and you could see on Allura's side that she was unsure of herself, especially after Lance um, confesses to the mice about his feelings about Allura, and, you know, the mice, of course, had to tell Allura little gossips. And um, you see the uncertainty, kind of sadness on her face, too, and it's like, well, you know what, I've been there. That was definitely a relatable moment, but I can't help but feel like Lance is being set up to be a rebound. I don't know. That's my speculation, but I'm really hoping that they wind up being friends, if that's the case. Or, or at least the beginnings of them working on a romantic relationship towards the end of the series. I would be happy with that. Like, let them build up their friendship more. You know? So, I don't know. There's there, there just, for me, it was like overall inconsistencies. It's, again, overall, it was a good season. Actually considered one of the best because it was so heavy. There was so much. There was so much. And, um, also, like, one one good thing, though, uh, another really, really good thing, though, is the fight scene in the Black Paladins. <sighs> Listen, that was absolutely the most brutal I've ever seen in that show. Hands down, it, it kind of replaces the fight scene between Lothar and Zarkon. It's like the top three. That, Lothar and Zarkon, and the fight between Syncline and Voltron. Look, the animation was top-notch. Shiro looked like a devil man. Literally, I was reminded of Devil Man Crybaby, and Shiro, like, the clone, looked like a devil man. That's just how amazing it was. That That's just, like, how hard they went in. And another awesome thing was Keith showing his Galar's head. Like, he just went full, like, full throttle after, like, just in that fight scene. And it was amazing. Again, kind of made me wish that the other paladins were there to witness this. That's his teammate. That's their teammate. But, at the end of the day, I know that it's not my show. I didn't write it. You know, that's why there's fanfic. <laughs> you know, that's 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 why there's there's fan content. To an extent, can help remedy the inconsistencies. And again, <sighs> I'm glad I've given myself some time to actually cool down because before I'm like, you know what, I'm not even going to continue watching this show. I quit. That's it. Nope. But I've come back. <laughs> I've come back and um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next seasons, but I'm not getting my hopes up. It is what it is. I'm just at this point. It's like, listen, it's an enjoyable show. It's pretty much very well written compared to a lot of other animated shows this day, this day and age. So I'll give them a lot of credit for that. It's incredibly well done. The voice cast, listen, they they went above and beyond every season, especially the last three, seasons four through six. They've really, 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 really put their all into this. And everybody, everyone has done a phenomenal job of this. And I'm, 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 I'm okay with it. I'm happy. I mean, like I said, not everything is going to, make me happy not everybody's gonna make not everything's gonna make you happy it it is what it is you know they plan this show years in advance so we're gonna get what they can give us so that i'm grateful for 
And I'm also grateful for you guys listening in. And uh, I will be even more grateful if you can uh, weigh in on this entire piece and what your opinion is. How do you feel about Season 6? What emotions do you feel? What are you happy with and what are you not happy with? Are there any changes you think would have that could have been made to make it better? Let me know. Shoot me a message. Spam our walls. Anything you can to reach us and engage in the conversation. I would love to keep talking about this. At the same time, I would need some some time to like really calm down because my blood pressure was raised all seven episodes. Like I, there was just no room for breathing at all whatsoever. And like I said, it was like a punch of the solar plexus. That thing was oh, that's the most intense I've ever I've ever watched. And actually. Before I go, I just want to point out that th- this season has done so much that I've, I'm seeing that there's like a mass exodus. Like, not huge, but like people, fans are leaving. They're like, nope, I'm not watching this anymore. <laughs> so it it's lit- it's seriously one of those seasons that will make you or break you. I almost got broken, but uh, I guess, like I said, I'm just going to watch and hopefully see the further developments of our characters. See where it goes. And I want to see how Shiro is now that he is back in the physical realm. So I'm Paulina Guerriere. Thank you for listening in. And you have a great, great rest of your day, weekend, week, month, year, hour. And join the initiative.